Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Michelle Ferre and I'm a fourth grade math and science teacher in Maryland. As a math and science teacher, one of my favorite topics is STEM. And if you don't know what STEM stands for, it stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. As big of a supporter as I am for STEM, it can be difficult to fit it in with your curriculum and all the assessments. So in today's video, I'm going to share an easy way to incorporate STEM into your classroom. STEM is a super popular buzzword in education, especially lately, so I'm not gonna go into detail as to why it's important to incorporate STEM in your classroom because there are oodles and oodles of information out there, but I do wanna focus on the organizational aspect of it because that is something near and dear to my heart. The easiest way I have found to incorporate STEM in my classroom is through STEM centers. These are essentially bins of STEM materials that my students can use to build and create. For those of you that watched my latest vlog, I did show you that I have expanded my STEM centers from 8 to 16. For this video, I did want to focus on talking about how I fit this into my schedule, how I organize the materials, and then sharing the materials that I use. That way, for those of you that want to use this in your classroom, hopefully you kind of get a brief overview of all the information you need and you can make it happen. Let's jump right in and start talking about how I fit this into my schedule. Since I am departmentalized in fourth grade and we have different teachers for different subjects, it can be really difficult to fit this in because our students are constantly switching classes. One of the primary times I allow my students to use the STEM centers is during arrival time. My students have a 20 minute chunk of time for arrival and during this time they're expected to go to their lockers, get their materials, put their lunch stick in the bin and do their morning work. Now morning work does vary from morning to morning but usually it's some kind of a writing assignment or small activity and once my students finish their morning work they come up to me and show it to me for approval. I'm usually standing by my door greeting students. Once I have approved their morning work, I allow them to get a STEM center. The great thing about these STEM centers is because they're in containers, there's no prep work involved. Students can just go grab a container, take it back to their desk, and immediately start creating. A lot of STEM activities or projects require extensive materials, and that makes it really difficult to fit in. But with the STEM centers, you can fit it into a small chunk of time, like five or 10 minutes, and have your students start creating. Another time I let my students use STEM centers is when they finish assignments early, especially in science. I am a science teacher. Typically in science, a lot of it is more whole group, but when my students are working in partners or independently or working on a small group research type project, anytime they have left over, they're able to go grab a STEM center. Also, there are those times where you plan a 40 minute lesson and then suddenly you're done in 25 minutes. And I will use STEM centers as kind of filler activities during that time as well. I also allow my students to use STEM centers during study hall time. We have an hour chunk of time on Fridays where we do not have planning time, but some of our students go to chorus, so we're not able to continue with regular instruction. Study hall is basically a time for students to catch up on work and complete redos, and my students who do not have any work to do are able to work on STEM centers. Now, I totally understand not everyone has a chunk of time built into their schedule, but something you could try doing on a Friday is called ketchup and pickles. I've talked about this on my channel before. Ketchup and pickles is not at all what it sounds like, essentially you have students that have to catch up on assignments so students that have missing work and then your pickles are your students who are done all of their assignments and they get to pick an activity to do you could incorporate this into the last like hour of the day on Fridays you get your students caught up on work and then other students have opportunities for fun activities the final time I allow my students to use STEM centers is during indoor recess so often my students just want to jump on a computer during indoor recess or they tell me they're bored and so by bringing STEM centers into my classroom it has given my students more options and they're able to be more creative and imaginative which I love to see now that I have covered all the ways I fit it into my schedule let's talk about the organization of the materials. The great thing about STEM centers is that you can use any size bin or container to store them. I've seen teachers use something as small as a plastic pencil case to carry them, or you can use a larger bin like what I'm gonna show you. These are the containers that I use. These are Sterlite containers. I will link them for you in the description box. You can find these at like Walmart or Target and also on Amazon. I really like these because they have a nice big opening, so it makes it really easy for students to get the materials out and then return them to the bin. I also really like these because they stack really, really well. I store my STEM containers on a bookshelf and I'm able to fit 
four in a stack and I'm able to fit two stacks on a shelf for a total of four stacks of four or 16 bins. I do label my STEM centers to make it easier for my students to find them. These labels are actually my Sterlite bin drawer labels, so I will link those for you as well. I opted to go for black because I did previously use rainbow colors, but then it drove me crazy when my students did not return them in rainbow order. So by using black ones, it doesn't matter what order they are in. I also have opted to label it by what material is in the bin. Previously, I labeled them as STEM Center 1, STEM Center 2, and I realized that that didn't make sense because the students didn't know what was in the container. So by labeling them with what is inside, it makes it much easier for my students to find it. Another option for organization would be using drawers. I've seen so many different drawer organizational units, especially at Michael's. That's one of my go-to places to get organizational materials. Drawers are awesome because it does keep things nice and organized, but it can be a little bit difficult if your students are trying to move the materials around the room. If you do opt to go for a drawer system, I would make sure that the drawers pull all the way out. That way students can take them and carry them around the room as needed. Now we are at my favorite part. Let's talk about what materials I keep in my STEM centers. Let me start this by saying that I personally opt to leave STEM centers very open-ended. There are a bunch of different ways that you can do STEM centers in your classroom. I know some teachers who have task cards and specific things that they want their students to create or build. That's just personally not me. I think that students have enough time of their day that is structured and they need more of that unstructured playtime where they're able to be creative, they're able to use their imagination, and they're not tied to a specific task. I understand that my philosophy philosophy is probably not the most research-based philosophy, but I truly just believe that students need time to be able to be creative, use the materials in any way their heart desires. So I leave my STEM centers very open-ended and I literally just tell my students, all right, go grab one and start making things. However, please note that you can go online and you can actually find structured tasks for your students to complete with the STEM centers. I'm just gonna jump right in. I'm gonna start showing you these containers and show you the materials inside and tell you where you can find them. So the first one that I already showed you are Tinker Toys. Now, these are like Tinker Toys 2.0. These are actually plastic materials. Traditional Tinker Toys are actually made out of wood, but these ones are plastic. I did get these off of Amazon and I love them because there are so many different shaped pieces. So students are truly able to just be creative and they can make a million different things with these. I got a 200 pack, but I do believe they have smaller packs and maybe even larger packs, but I will link the specific pack that I got if you are interested. Next, I have something called IQ Builder. This was one of those impulse items on Amazon that I found. I was not specifically looking for it, but it popped up under my suggested items. And I was like, whoa, those are really cool. There's a lot of these little balls that have circles in them and then there's connector pieces, but then there also are things that they can use as like walls and then there's wheel pieces. And again, the options with these are endless. I love that they are plastic because they are extremely durable and they were very affordable. So I will link these in the description box as well. Next, I have a STEM game, which is called Blocks Rock. I actually worked with this company. They reached out to me, and when I first saw the game, I was like, oh, like that looks pretty cool. Sure, I'll share it. But once my students started playing this, they could not get enough. Now, I'll link a couple different places you can get this game. You can get it from their website. You also can get it on Amazon. It's kind of on the pricier side, I'm not going to lie. However, you can always ask for donations of Amazon gift cards and you can always do a donors choose project to get it. But essentially students have these colored blocks and they are trying to build whatever image is shown on the card. And it's a competition between the two students or the two groups. Whoever builds it first and hits the bell wins the point. It's super interactive, it's super fun. I do have a better walkthrough in one of my vlogs, so I will link that for you down in the description box. The next STEM Center is something super simple that you probably already have in your classroom, and that is pattern blocks. The reason I put these in a STEM Center is number one, because I had a whole bunch of extra ones. I have a huge bin of them that I use for math manipulatives, but I had a bunch left over that I could not fit in that bin, so I was like, hey, let me put it in a STEM Center. Students love these blocks. They're super fun to build with and make patterns and there's just so many different options for them and we all know that students love to play with them when we're using them in math so by putting them in a STEM center it makes them less likely to play during math time. Now my pattern blocks were provided by my district however I will link some that you can grab off of Amazon down below in case you don't have any. This next one is a personal favorite of mine. These are called brain flakes. These were again kind of an impulse buy on Amazon. I saw them I was like oh those look pretty cool but my students love them. 
As you can tell, I already have some structures that have been built that my students left in here because they are still using them. These are super simple. They're just little plastic discs that have these wedges in them so students can actually connect them together and then build with them. I love that they're brightly colored and my students can kind of do cool things with the colors and make different patterns and they're just super versatile. They can be used for so many different things and they're very affordable. Next, I have a set of blueprint blocks and these are perfect for students who really enjoy architecture and building buildings. These actually came from Lakeshore Learning, so I will link those for you in the description box. There are these mats that have different structures on them that students build onto, and they are color-coded. So there are green ones for easier ones, yellow for a little bit harder, and then there are red ones for the more difficult structures. Now the blueprints do not fit in the container, so I actually just keep them next to the container, but I do put all of the wooden blocks on the inside of the container. With the blocks, there are different shapes and different sizes. Students can use the blueprints but they also can just build their own structures which I really like because if they want some more guidance they have it but if they want to just totally go rogue and go out on their own they have that flexibility. Next I have another stem setter that is perfect for students who love building buildings and love architecture. This is an architect set from Lakeshore Learning as well. This is one of those things where I first saw it and I was like Eh, okay, I guess that's kind of cool. And then when I took it out of the box, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So this architect set is all plastic, so it's super durable. There are different base plates that they can kind of use as floors, and then there are different walls, and they have pictures on them, so they really can mix and match. There also are different like roof pieces that they can build with. There are fencing pieces and stairs and just all kinds of cool things. And what I love about this is it seems very realistic for the students who are building. I think online it has this geared towards more like younger students, but let me just say my fourth graders love it. Next I have a STEM classic and those are Lincoln Logs. Now, I will link these from Amazon down below, but I'll be honest, I actually got my set from Goodwill. I love going into Goodwill or consignment shops and looking at their toy section because sometimes you can find some great things, like some Lincoln Logs. If you don't know what Lincoln Logs are, first of all, where have you been? But second of all, they are these little wood pieces that build on each other and students are able to make little cabins and things. There also are roof pieces. They're super versatile. I personally love Lincoln Logs because I totally played with them at a babysitter's house when I was younger and I think that students really enjoy them too. They're simple but at the same time they're a lot of fun. The next one is hashtag blocks. Now I got these from the Target dollar spot. They come in these tubes of I don't even know how many are in the tube but you can just grab a whole bunch of tubes. They're one dollar each but if you can't find them at your Target you can also get them online on Amazon. They're called Plus Plus but it's the same thing. These are really cool because they're just small little plastic pieces things that look like hashtags or an octothorpe isn't that the real name for them and they interlock with each other so students can build with them i've seen my students do so many amazing things with these and they're so simple but yet you can create these crazy things my students love making these little like cubes with them but love these super cheap and super simple next we have another classic and those are Legos. Legos are another one of those things that you can find at Goodwill, at yard sales. People will literally just sell buckets of them and they're like, please take them. I don't even care how much you pay, just take them. You also can get them online, so I will link them on Amazon for you as well. But Legos are super simple and you probably have some at your house already. But again, they can be used for so many different things and students love them. And to go with that, I also have some Lego base plates. These are the square or rectangular plates that students build on top of. I have them in all different colors. I got them on Amazon. I will link them for you in the description box. Again, they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, but these are great for students to use to actually build their creations on top of. Now let's talk about some magnetic things because magnets are a lot of fun. First, I have this set of magnetic cubes. These came from Lakeshore Learning, so I will link them. These are super simple. It says cubes. There actually are triangles as well, but they are just these little plastic pieces that have magnets so you can connect them super easy. I love these because of the magnets it helps to hold them together better and you don't have to worry about them falling over and then you have a kid crying because their creation is ruined. No one wants that. The next one I'm going to show you are some magnetic shapes. My students actually use these with the magnetic cubes because they're all magnetic. They can connect them all together but these are essentially pattern blocks that are big and magnetic. These are a lot of fun for 
students to connect. And again, because they are magnetic, it makes it really easy for them to attach the different pieces and you don't have to worry about anything falling over or someone coming and bumping the desk and then the pieces all get scattered. The magnets make it really, really convenient. Next, I have a set of magnetic tiles. I got these off of Amazon. They are again in squares and triangles, but they're not a full shape. They're just like the outline of the shape. And again, just like I've said before, love the magnets because they hold on really, really well. And again, these are really cool because students can build these 3D models of things just using the outside pieces. My students never cease to amaze me with all the things that they can do with these. I also have these set of magnetic sticks. I wasn't really sure what else to call them, but these came from Amazon. Again, super affordable. There are the stick pieces, the little metal balls, and then there also are these curved pieces. Students, again, can build these like 3D structures with them. And the magnets on these are pretty strong, so you don't have to worry about it falling over as they build up and it gets heavy, it still stays there. And my final stem bin, kind of empty, but I have an assortment of brain teasers. Now you could argue that a brain teaser isn't really STEM and it's probably not, but I love brain teasers so I like to have some available for my students. I have these like little metal brain teaser things that I got from the Target dollar spot for like a dollar. These are a lot of fun for students to kind of play with. I do want to go online and find some more and add to this. So if you have any good ones, go ahead and share them in the comments down below because I need to order some more for my bin. That is all I have for you all. Hopefully you got some new ideas on how to work it into your schedule, how to organize it and got some new materials that you can add. Again, everything is linked for you down in the description box. If you have any questions for me, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Also, if you have not already, give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and for supporting my YouTube channel. If you want to check out any of my older videos, you can use the two links right down here. If you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, you can use the link right up here. The links to all of my social media sites, my Teachers Pay Teacher Store, my Merchandise Store, and my Amazon Store are in the description box, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.